Peter Kilty, uh, my guest tonight, uh, world indoor champion and uh, European indoor champion in 60 meters. Uh, and uh, from last year, uh, you won uh, at the European Champions uh, yeah. in the relay. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about your success lately? Yeah, it's been really good. It's been a big transformation for me from 2013, where I didn't, I didn't get a chance to win any medals in 2013, and I missed the Olympic Games in in London. So mm. to come 2014 to win. World Championships, European Championship Relay and the Commonwealth Games, so the medal was a really big year for me. Yeah, and, and it was uh, actually unexpected. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was very unexpected. I think people didn't even expect me to make the final, but mm -hmm. when I ran in the heats, then every, I think everybody noticed that I was running really, really fast and I was somebody who was going to be a big threat. Yeah, you're improving very fast from yeah. start to start and yeah. from yeah. Every, every hit, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who noticed your talent for, uh, for running? Um, I think my dad was the first person that realised I was fast and maybe one of my school teachers, but they noticed that I could run really fast even when I was only five years old. Okay, so yeah. that's, that's very young. Very young, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I you was were always like, fast, yeah. uh, Faster than uh, older kids? All older kids, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Uh, and so when did you start it, uh, your trainings? like the I started when I was ten. That's when I went to the club and started to do races, but I didn't start to take it serious till I was maybe 15. Yeah. 15? Yeah, 14. And uh, at the beginning it was uh, like once in a week? Or? Yeah, wh when I was 10 I used to go once a week, once every two weeks, mm -hmm. and even when I was 17 I still only used to train twice per week. Okay. I didn't start training full time like, a, you know, like five, six days a week until I was 20. Okay, did you have uh, good facilities from the beginning uh, for training or...? Um, it, was, it, it was okay, we just had a, a track that was there and we had okay. an athletics club, it was just a standard track. The facilities were okay, it was just a standard track. N nothing more was needed no, at that time? No, no, no. As a kid, I just eat, even to train on the grass would have been okay for me. And uh, you were, like, from the beginning focused on athletics or more into different sports? Yeah, I, I, when I was a kid I'd done boxing, mm -hmm. I'd done football, rugby, Thai boxing, lots of different sports, I used to play all sports and then I decided that I wanted to do running from the age of 10, 11, but I, I was still playing other sports until 14, 15 and then I decided when I was 15 that I would just want to do athletics. Okay, yeah. uh, you were uh, raising in the north part of England? Yeah, the north east, yeah. The north yeah. east, yeah. yes, and yeah. uh, exactly Middlesbrough? Middlesbrough, yeah. 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 Middlesbrough, yeah. 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 And uh, about that kind, uh, that uh, part of England. Yeah, I grew up in what you would call like a ghetto area. Yeah. So there's lots of crime. Everybody, all of my friends, they're in prison, they're in jail. All the my friends that I grew up with, everybody, some family, friends, they're all in in prison, in jail. And I was lucky to to get out from there because everybody went into crime, and I, athletics was my way to okay. to stay out. Mm -hmm. So it was it was it was pretty tough, but it was an adventure too. And you're in a good point right now. Yeah. Uh, but uh, about you were a kid, so uh, you were not thinking about uh, I'm in a bad. Uh, yeah, yeah. When I, when you're a kid, you don't realize that you're in a dangerous situation because that was all yeah, I know. I exactly. didn't know any different yeah. life, and then. But now when I get old, now I'm older and I became successful in athletics and I start to make good money, then I look back and think, well, that was actually really crazy, and mm -hmm. that was. That was a bad life. Yeah. That wasn't good. So now I can see because I became successful. But I think the people who live there, they still don't know any different. So at the time, it was just it was fun and it was an adventure because I didn't know no different. But looking back, it was really tough. And uh, did you become uh, an idol for for people from Middlesbrough? Yeah, from my area, yeah. everywhere I go now, I go to like even I'm in the shopping markets and people ask for an autograph or a picture. Mm -hmm. um, every time I go to the local stadium all of the kids they want my picture they want an autograph so that that's really nice so yeah so yeah. you become kind, yeah. of, kind of a hero yeah so yeah. do you think it may help also uh that kids not to get into this bad way yeah i i, I hope so some of the kids at the little extract they come they they all don't come from a bad area some of them come from bad areas some of them come from really nice areas with rich parents and stuff so it's it's mixture but hopefully i can one day I'd like to go to all the bad areas and maybe set up some form of like 
charity or organisation which helps c kids from like bad ghetto areas mm -hmm. to then get into sports and, and help them financially to to have the money to, to do athletics properly. And that would be a good, yeah. good way to, yeah. to help them. Yeah. Uh, after Olympic Games in London, mm -hmm. uh, you didn't get any financial support from the Federation? No, no. So you were like on your own? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah. you were thinking about uh, changing something in your life, maybe to finish with athletics? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, for example, yeah, I was going to go into the into the Marines. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go and and be a uh, a Marine, so that would be something which which interested me. And I was very close, very very close. And then I ended up sticking for athletics for like a couple more weeks, and I had one race. And I think I ran like ten point two or six point six something in the sixty meters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was indoors and. Um, and I decided that we'll try and have an outdoor season and I had made the team for the World Championships in Moscow and I ran only in the relay heats and then mm -hmm. that made them give me lottery funding money so then I was supported okay. by UK Sport and they were paying me money so as soon as I had that help a couple of months later I won the World Championships and then everything changed again. Everything changed again, yeah. 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 But uh, when you uh came to support uh, before the world in the yeah, championships. Yeah. Uh, I heard some <laughs> rumors yeah, that yeah, yeah. you had like 15 pounds in, yeah, <laughs> in your it, pocket. It wasn't that bad. I think that was kind of like yeah, a, maybe, another journalist making it, maybe. <laughs> make, 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 taking it extreme. But at the time I was getting uh, less than a thousand pounds a month, maybe 900 pounds a month. But all of that money I used to spend it because traveling to training mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, so I didn't have a lot of money. All of the money that I was getting, I was spending. So. But yeah. it wasn't as bad as fifteen pounds. Okay. But, <laughs> so but it wasn't. It wasn't a lot compared to what mm -hmm. happened afterwards. Yeah. So maybe that was. Like, yeah. 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 Uh, so about uh, the World Indoor Championships. At, at first, uh, you didn't get to the main team. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then suddenly you get the information that you're going. Yeah. Well, that wasn't that wasn't really true because mm -hmm. the first team wasn't announced. So the team hadn't been announced. When the team got announced, I was in the first team, but. The week before the team got selected, one of the guys who won our trials, who had the automatic qualifying, he injured his hamstring, mm -hmm. which then left me and Dwayne Chambers to go. But me and Dwayne Chambers finished equal second at the British Championships with 6.53. So one of us was going to get selected and mm -hmm. one of us wasn't. So for some reason people thought that it was me that was not going to get selected, but we, we will never know. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so everything. for. Uh, it happened for a reason, so yeah, I guess you so, yeah. did yeah. go to Suppet yeah. and, and won yeah. uh, World Championships. Yeah. Uh, how about your training? Uh, how did you train? How do you train right now? Yeah. Uh, it changes somehow, uh, yeah, year yeah. by year? or Yeah, it changes year by year. At the moment I'm training alone, I'm just training. I'm listening to my own body. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and if I'm really, really stiff I'll take a rest day or do something easy. So at the moment I'm not coached by anybody. I get help from British Athletics, you know, with the physiotherapy and some small assistance with coaching and filming with my technique and stuff. But at the moment, my day, we're running lots of speed endurance runs. We ran 200 today, which was, which was pretty good. And we're focusing on the last part of the 100 meter race. We know that to 60 meters, I'm one of the best in the world. Yeah. So we can. Uh, that that's really strong. So at the moment, I'm lifting weight, lots of weights, lots of plyometrics, box jumps, hurdle jumps, and speed endurance runs. And then closer to the British Championships and the World Championships, I will start to speed things up, do less weight training, so I'm I'm lighter and faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And more than dynamic. Also. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. And uh, mm. about your weights, yeah. personal best. Yeah. Bench press 160 kilograms without any help. Okay. Quite strong. <laughs> um, but at the moment, I don't lift as much. When I used to lift heavy, mm -hmm. I was only running 20.5 yeah, so that, kind of and 10.2. So now I'm lifting lighter but faster mm -hmm. and focusing more on running and plyometrics and dynamic things rather than lifting weights. Squat 260 kilograms, power clean 150. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're strong anyway, because yeah. yeah. I'm sure that you're able to lift that heavy weights right yeah. now. But it's like but, yeah, now I think not needed. No, when I when I'm lifting heavy weights, I get stiff. Sometimes I get injured. So I think for me, it, the most important thing is to stay injury free and 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 to be running because if I'm injured, I can't. Yeah. I can't rest. I also the, the main thing for me, I've stayed injury free pretty. I've been okay with injuries the last two years. I've only had one, that's one good. injury in two years. Yeah, so, so yeah, that's, that's really yeah, and it was just small. Anyway, you're still getting faster. Yeah. Last time, yeah. ten uh, point five, uh, zero, zero five. five. Yeah, yeah. So you're very close to the ten second border. Yeah. So when? <laughs> We're just waiting. Yeah. For so you. I, now I've got. I want to run. Maybe I've got the European Team Championships next week. If the conditions are good, maybe I can do it there, but we, we, we'll have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. But I think as soon as I have a race where it's warm and you know the, the, the wind is okay, then I think, I think I can do it maybe in one race, two races, three races, I don't know when, but I think it can happen this year. Okay, yeah. we are really waiting for this, because yeah, as we know, yeah. uh, how, how many? Uh, athletes to, to break uh, Ath like white there's one. one white athlete to do it yeah one so I will so, be the second so you would be the second yeah, so yeah. we are really waiting for yeah it. yeah yeah and I think Christoph Lemaitre hasn't run that for uh, I think four four years now so four years. yeah so five years maybe mm -hmm. yeah so, uh, so anyway uh, what do you think what's missing in uh, white athletes that they cannot run as fast as I think it's probably confidence. I think maybe they have, you know, they don't believe that they can break 10 seconds or they don't believe that they can compete with the Caribbean and American athletes. So maybe that, I think that may be a problem. You know, obviously, on average, there's a lot more African Caribbean sprinters, a lot of black guys who can run quicker. On average, there's more. But I think there is definitely exceptions. There's definitely some special white people who can who, who are capable of breaking ten seconds. But I think maybe they have a mental problem, and they they, have, they set barriers and maybe believe that they can't do it. But I believe that I can do. It. I've never had that problem, so maybe that's a reason. So maybe that's a reason. Maybe yeah. that, that that will help you, and yeah. maybe somebody some uh, yeah. white athletes we, will we need to get listen confident. to you and yeah. <laughs> and become yeah. more powerful. Oh, definitely, and, yeah. uh, confidence will help. Uh, what do you think about Justin Gatlin? Uh, yeah. About uh, actually, he was disqualified after a doping. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, right now he's back. Yeah. He's running pretty fast. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think at the moment he's the fastest in the world, so, yeah, so. You know, it's very interesting he's been banned twice, I think I think he's very lucky to be to be back, what given, a, given a, a third chance, so yeah, you know, um, maybe it's not fair on the rest of the athletes that he's been banned twice, but, you know, we never know, I never know what situation he's in, you know, he's obviously passing his drugs test which he's taken now, so there's no proof to say that he's taking drugs, so you know, he's running faster than ever, so... so that's very interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what do you think about disqualify, uh, dis to disqualify athletes for life if they are taking... Yes, yeah, I, 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 think, I, think, I think that could be the, the next... Um, that should be something which they should bring in, a lifetime ban for people who fail a mm -hmm. drugs test. If they find out that they've taken it purposely yeah. and they haven't been tampered or, you know, something like that, but if you've purposely taken drugs, maybe then it's... A lifetime ban would be the best thing. I think so too. Yeah. Uh, do you work with a psychologist? I don't work with a psychologist. I'm very, <laughs> I'm very confident and mentally strong, so I don't think that I need to work with one. But who knows? Maybe somewhere down the line I can work with one. But at the moment, I don't think I need one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what do you remember from Poland? <laughs> Poland, I, I can't remember that much. I obviously win the World Championships. I went to my first World Junior Championship there in 2008. And I like Poland, it's the people are nice. I like the country. And I always race there. There's lots of races. I think I raced there twice indoors this year too and I got a really big reception from, from the people. That was great. And I got to meet the Prime Minister. Oh uh, yeah. Probably. I did that, that's possible. In, in one of in my last competition in Lords, uh, I don't know. Yeah, you could <laughs> it. Yeah, I got to meet the prime minister there, so that was that was really cool. But I haven't really had chance to go out and explore 
to the rest of Poland. You must visit Poland. Yeah, I will. I will. I will visit like in the future. Yeah, yeah. For a few days, just to, holiday, to yeah. spend some time. And, yeah. yeah, as a holiday. Yeah. Uh, okay. Do you have any motto for life? <laughs> I don't really have one specifically, but I would advise people to never um, let people tell you that you can't be successful. Never let anybody hold you down, and no matter how where you come from or how hard it is, you can always, you know, be become successful no matter where you come from and just be confident and, and yeah, just make sure you dedicate yourself and, and, and be confident. Okay. Yeah. So, thank you very much yeah. for the interview yeah. and uh, I hope some Polish athletes will just follow your advices. Be confident <laughs> and break 10. Yeah.